In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who calls us to conversion, be with you all. And with your spirit. Jesus is the compassion and mercy of God, so let us call out to him who is our salvation. We praise you, O Lord, you give us living water, Lord, have mercy. God, our Creator, show forth your mighty works in the midst of your people. Enlighten your church that we may know your Son as the true light of the world, and through our worship confess him as Christ and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, 
for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. From that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord.
be with you and with your spirit. The good news according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on the man's eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. That name means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, it just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, the man put clay on my eyes. I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was division over them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? The man said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you are trying to lecture us then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. The man said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshiped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, last week, before we were told that we need to shelter in place, I went to a, uh, I had a dinner party with a couple friends, and one of them commenting on the, uh, the pandemic uh, said, we will not be the same when we get on the other side of this event. Every crisis marks a moment where we are called to move in new directions. But in the midst of crisis, we often can't see where we are going. So we need the healing insight of the Holy Spirit. Today's readings are an invitation for us to trust in God and that God sees things from a different vantage point than we often see things. In our first reading from uh, the uh, First book of Samuel, we see that the people of God are feeling threatened. Uh, they are caught between the great powers of Assyria and Egypt and Babylon, and they feel a need uh, to uh, unite more tightly under the rule of one man, un under a single leader, a king. So the prophet Samuel is sent by God to the house of Jesse uh, to anoint the leader of God's people. He goes to the family of Jesse, who has many sons. And when Samuel sees the eldest son, he thinks, surely this is the one. But God rejects him and all the brothers who were present. God tells Samuel finally, uh, Samuel tells Jesse finally, Are, do you have any other sons? Do you have any other sons? And they said, well, there's the youngest, but he's out in the field with the flocks. And so Samuel tells him, well, we're not going to start until, uh, until he gets here. And then when uh, the young man comes in, God tells Samuel, anoint him. He's the one. 
Today, Jesus heals a man who was blind from birth. The Pharisees had assumed that the man was born blind because he or a member of his family were sinners. We still hear these kinds of sentiments in our own day, in our own culture, when we hear people say things like, the poor are poor because they are lazy or they deserve it. The bad things that happen are because people uh, somehow brought it on themselves. Rather than assigning blame, Jesus sees the man's blindness as an opportunity to show forth the power of the love of God and God's compassion and mercy. Too often in our fast-paced culture, we are programmed to judge only on the surface. We rely not on insight, but on superficial impressions. Yet God, right now at this time, is calling us to slow down and take our time to look for those things that truly matter. A couple of friends have sent me a poem that helps us see this time in a different way as an opportunity for love. The poem is called Pandemic, and I'd like to share it with you. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up, just for now, on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing. Pray. Touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, Reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, as long as we shall all live. Amen. We are children of the light, and so we strive to make the needs of our world visible. Let us now uh, pray for all those who are in need. For the church, that we may bring light, bring to light whatever is hidden in darkness, and heal the wounds that have gone unnoticed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our government leaders, that they may continually work to ensure the well-being and health of the most vulnerable in their care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of extreme human rights violations, those who have been abducted, tortured, or executed, and for their families and loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for those who are preparing for the Easter sacraments, especially those in our own parish, that they may walk in the light of Christ and radiate that light to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may resolve to look beyond appearances and attempt to see the face of Christ in all whom we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for uh, those who are sick, those suffering from cancer, AIDS, Alzheimer's, mental illness, diabetes, and uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, for their healing, especially those that we call to mind.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the deceased servants of God, uh, the benefactors of our parish community who have died, and all our deceased uh, relatives and friends who have gone before us to the other side of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Uh, we pray for uh, those intentions that we have in our own hearts, in our parish book of intentions. Uh, let us also pray for uh, uh, the leaders of our government as they lead us in the response to the coronavirus, uh, for medical personnel and first responders, and for all those things that lie in the depths of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health and making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of economic, uh, the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. During this time, when we cannot physically wrap our, round, our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us uh, pray uh, that we all dwell in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.